been by the guys, but you'll talk to Steve and them about that. And yeah, obviously we have had some really exciting news recently with the signings of Chiellini, um, now with Gareth being leaked, but then uh, somewhat officially announced last night, which is incredibly exciting news for us, and then also Carlos Vela re-signing. So lots of exciting news. Again, I can just speak to my tired old narrative as to what our focus is here, and that's to win and to do so in a way um, that represents our city, our supporters, and makes them proud. And so today, yesterday, is, is another momentous occasion for us, for the league. And it's a lot of positive news um, on the back of a good win, a good win today. So I'm sure I'll get into further detail with your questions, but um, I'll turn the floor over to you guys. First, if you can talk a little bit about the details and how the findings for Gilini and Gareth Barrow came about, especially with the targeted allocated money and how it's Sure. Thank you. So, I think there are some similarities, some differences, but I think thematically it, it speaks to the interest of these players who still have a lot to give to a club, to a team, to a city, and they have noticed what this club has done in our short history. And we've had open conversations with all of these players. It's not entirely different in terms of process with all our players where we present to them what we feel is a unique opportunity for a player like them at this stage of their career to do something a little bit different. But priority is to come to win and we want winners. We've, we've said that and so now, if I'm just isolating these two guys, we have guys, you know, a player who's won five Champions Leagues, guy that wins World Cups, wins Euro European Championships, wins league titles. So for us, it's just an example of an opportunity with two great players who have done great things, who will continue to do great things in this next phase of their career here at LAFC. And I think one thing I would love to highlight is the fact that we see both of them being great influences on the guys that we already have here. So we have, you saw, Two guys combined for a, a great second goal today who are young, South American, talented players that we have identified and brought in to develop. And we just think being in the, in the same environment as pros, like some that we already have, Elie Sanchez, Ryan Hollingshead, Franco, Carlos, and now to add another two players to that really experienced group we think complements the group well and will put us in an even better position to succeed this year. When it comes to Carlos, he's been that cornerstone and the fact that he's staying with the club and now getting like other experienced great players into the mix, as you mentioned, what does that mean for LAFC? Yeah, so Carlos and LAFC have had and continue to have a phenomenal relationship. I think things that get released snippets here and there are not entirely, they, they don't entirely illustrate the picture of our, our relationship from day one. Carlos has been, I think, the best player in the league when he's healthy, but certainly a phenomenal player for LAFC. And I think for Carlos and his desire to win, he sees the importance of adding these pieces, again, to help with what we already have and then to add their quality and experience as well. John, I know you mentioned uh, your conversations with Chiellini and how you were won over as a player, as a man. Now there's this perception about Gareth Bale that he may not be in love with the game and he plays golf, but your conversation with, with him, how did that shed away some of those thoughts that you said this is a guy you want because he's this or that? How, how would you see those, those interactions? Yeah, thanks Max. That never came up, nor was it a concern. And I think it is entirely possible to like to play golf and also want to win. It's just to me, they're not mutually exclusive concepts and I think for us, I think what was great about the conversation with Gareth is it was just, what do you want from your next, and let's see if that matches what LAFC is and can offer you. And I think for players like Gareth, they speak to a coach like Steve who says, look, this is what it's like here on an everyday basis. This is what we expect out of you, and this is the responsibility you will have, but what do you want? And, and Gareth, and these guys, you don't win five Champions League trophies. You don't win, you're not the highest you're not the most valuable player in the world in recent history, or sort of in, in recent time. Actually, I think the, the guy that now is, is was here today. But uh, in any event, you don't, 
You don't achieve those things if you don't have that hunger. And I know that. Steve knows that. We know that. So we did our diligence. And in fact, I'm really excited about what this change of scene will mean for Gareth and his ability to focus on playing. And you know, we had really in-depth conversation. What do you think you need to be successful? And he described the environment at LAFC. Not knowing it necessarily, but having done his research. But our, we have a great group of players now. And I think we did an incredible amount of diligence on Gareth. We have players who know him. We have staff who know him. And it was just really open, transparent conversation, and we quickly saw that it was the right match. And we're incredibly excited in the face of very stiff competition worldwide that he agreed. And we're excited to welcome him in the next couple weeks. Coach Raul from We Host Sports. Uh, tonight being Pride Night, what would you want to tell the LGBT community? And is there any message for uh, our LGBTQ you. Sure, I think the best illustration of what LAFC stands for was what the 3252 did prior to the game. They did a, a TIFO, all are welcome here in Los Angeles, and I don't think I can add much to that message from the supporters representing our club. John, your, um, how difficult was doing the math in order to meet the salary requirements and also uh, having a, a DP stuff? Available. So the math is not entirely difficult because the rules are the rules and we know what we could afford, we know what we could do. So it's not entirely difficult. And again, this wasn't a financial conversation for Gareth nor for us. It was how can we make it work within the model of LAFC with what we're trying to achieve. And if Gareth was making this decision at, with a financial motive, he wouldn't be an MLS. And I think what really meshed well with us was what were his priorities. And I think when you speak to where the sport in this, in these, in this league, in these countries, I should say, with Canada and the U.S., it's really exciting. It's, taking, it's getting a lot of people's attention globally. And I think what he saw in LAFC is a unique opportunity to make a real impact. I think players like Gareth will make impacts wherever they are, similar to Giorgio. But I think what he sees here is a unique opportunity to really make a difference with a stage like we provide at LAFC. We're at this inflection point now and there's tons of excitement around the league and with the World Cup coming. And I think they see that and see this opportunity to be a part of pulling this sport up to where we hope it can get to and we're competing with all the other sports and hopefully becoming the sport that all our kids talk about, that, um, that all the media is talking about. And I think they see that as a really exciting opportunity. John, just a follow up. Uh, I think the, uh Carlos Vela renewal had anything to do with, with the uh, Kelini and the Vail contract? I was always confident Carlos would sign. I think the, despite what maybe others read, it was never a contentious conversation. It was always heading in this direction. I don't think Carlos, his agent, nor LAFC on, on, on behalf of our owners ever thought we wouldn't be where we are. We can officially announce it. Uh, and that was done, so all of this preparation was thinking how does this match and meet and add to what we already have in our group, and Carlos is certainly a huge piece of that. Okay, we'll take questions from you soon, starting with Rebecca Williams with Skype. Good evening, from London, how are you? I'm well. Good, I'm just trying to get my video up, but it's not working. But I just wanted to ask you about Gareth Bale. Okay. Uh, when are you expecting him to arrive and how much game time do you expect him to have? Because obviously a both versus the World Cup the wins. Yeah, well, thank you for, uh, for joining us here. I'm happy to answer the question on, on Gareth. We, do, we don't have a firm date. Our window opens in early July, which would be the first time we can register him. We still have to go through immigration, paperwork, things like that. But we are hopeful that in the next week to 10 days, we'll be able to take care of that for him, for his family, to welcome them to Los Angeles in order for him to start to get up to speed with the group, get his fitness up, get his match readiness up. And the first game he would be potentially available with the opening of our window would be the game we have uh, here on July 8th. Did I answer everything yet? The game time? The game time. The game time. As much as possible. I think with players like Gareth and with our sports science team, with our coaches, understanding how to manage a player 
like Gareth, who, whether you call him a thoroughbred racehorse, a Ferrari, whatever your analogy is, they do need extra attention and, um, and care and management in order to put them in a position to succeed. And that is certainly our intention here, and we're confident that we will be able to do that. So the benefit of him joining a group like we already have is we'll play him as much as we can. Obviously, he, we expect him to be a top, top player for us and in this league, but we will do so sensibly. I think when Gareth is looking at what he needs to do, um, his priority will be at LAFC. We are absolutely sure of that, but we're not naive to the fact that he, like some other players of ours, have a World Cup on the horizon, and how we manage his preparation um, ahead of that World Cup will be important to Gareth and for the success of LAFC and we will likely try to have him uh, peaking as soon as he's finished with the game against uh, the United States. I'd, I'd love to get into specifics as a policy I don't. What I can tell you 